I'm going to talk about, it'll be the conclusion of part five, the glory of white Israel, part five again. Uh, I hope you have enjoyed the series, all of you, that even those of you who are listening on uh, DVD and hearing these sermons on uh, CD, I hope they've been a source of inspiration for you at this time. And that is my objective, to lift us up, to make us understand in a greater way, what our covenant responsibility is. Amen? Israelites, to understand what our kingdom covenant responsibilities are. Now, I'm going to begin this morning, this message, by having you turn in your Bibles to Galatians chapter 5 and verse 14. Galatians chapter 5 and verse 14, quote, For all the law is fulfilled in one word, even this. And I want you to think about this next statement, which God's word tells us about. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. I've gone over these verses before in many cases. But it says, for all the law is fulfilled in one word. And then it says right after that, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. So I want you to notice at the very beginning here, love is involved in God's law. It says that we should have love one for another. So there are love, and there is what? Works. Hmm. Works of love. You know what this tells me? Love carries God's works. Amen? Is involved in God's works. So we should be doing these, I will call it, and the Word of God really infers this, Works of love. But what kind of works or love? Is it the false form of love or is it God's form of love? Is it the fleshy forms of love or is it the spirit's forms of love? And so we're going to get into what the works of the spirit are today. Amen? We are going to get into that because there's a lot of confusion, you know, when it comes to works of the flesh. It says, verse 15, I like this, if, but if, I like it when God's word says that. Oh, gee, I wonder what that means here. Well, it means exactly what it's telling us right here. If you bite and devour one another, take heed that ye be not consumed one of another. So, God's Word's doing it what here? He's putting this responsibility, this declaration with God's Word on us. Amen? Amen? Is he not? He's putting this declaration from his word about be careful, don't bite and devour one another, take heed, therefore, that ye be not consumed one of another. Gee, can fleshly man do this? And I'm not talking about the others, I'm talking about us Christians right now, Israelites. Our Israelite brethren, can we bite and devour one another? I wonder if it's possible. Well, you tell me. Think of all the different ways in which we bite and devour one another. Or we'll get our feelings hurt over something. 
You know, as an example, I remember a couple years ago, a couple came here and I thought, oh, gee, they, uh, they're interested in the truth. And they were okay until I preached this. I preached that the Bible talks about race mixing and what race mixing will do to us. And she got up and then, of course, he had to be a good little husband and follow along with her. He got up and they stormed right out of here. Well, I wonder, what were they offended by? Were they offended, really, seriously? Were they offended by me or God's Word? Because does God's Word actually teach this? Could it possibly teach this? Yes, it does teach that. And they were easily offended by that. Are there other things? Like the Sabbath issue, the, na the sacred name issue, on and on. I won't go into them. Or though, are you easily offended by that? Do we have to come together? Is the only reason we come together and get together is because we, we agree on 100% of the issues. No, we learn and grow and question things and think about things and talk about things. And we're going to do that. That's God's purpose. Not that we bite and devour one another. Because God's Word says, if we bite and devour one another, we need to take heed and avoid being consumed one of another. Could we be our own enemies by, by biting and devouring one another? I'm not saying anything goes. If you're a homosexual, get out of here. If you're a murderer, get out of here. As an example, there are some absolutes in God's word, but there are some gray areas that we're kind of scratching our heads over and wondering about this and wondering about that. There's no problem in that. But let's not bite and devour one another with a, an attitude, an angry attitude of hate. We... There's all kinds of ways we can cause division today. In some ways, Israelites have become their own worst enemies. They can cause division, disharmony, disharmony, and discontent. We get prideful, don't we? And what is this pride? Well, you know, the Bible says pride goes for fall. Amen? And what can pride do to us in many, many cases? It brings about this animosity, a spirit of animosity. Look on verse 16. This I say then, because it's going to get kind of serious here, walk in the spirit. Well, let me ask you, how many of you have heard that before? Oh, yes, Brother Barley, I've, I've heard. Well, let's walk in the spirit. Hallelujah for that spirit. And ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Walk in the spirit, and ye shall not do what? Fulfill the lust of the flesh. Verse 17. For our flesh lusteth against the spirit, or fights against the spirit, and it goes on to say, and the Spirit fights against the flesh. Well, what's that telling you right there? They don't get along? What? The Spirit and the flesh do not get along? And these, it says, goes on to say, are contrary, the one against the other, so that they, can, they cannot do the things that they would. If you allow the flesh, if you bring that flesh into the congregation, it's going to cause problems. If you bring that flesh among the body of Christ, it's going to cause problems. We want the Spirit. Do we not, friends? Well, I wonder, as we go on here, we're going to find out what the Spirit is. And 
and what the flesh is. Sorry to kind of go over this again to a certain degree with you, but we need to. It's a problem. Let's overcome this problem. Let's deal with this problem, and let's move ahead in the Spirit, friends. And I, I'm pointing right at myself too, okay? I'm not just pointing at you. We've all sinned. We've all fallen short of the glory of God, haven't we? And so let's strive to do this. Let's strive to get in line and be a part of what the Holy Spirit tells us to do because it's not me telling you. It's God's Word telling us again. Get this through our heads. And so at the very beginning here, I want to ask you, do you feel like there is a war going on sometimes inside of you? I wonder where this comes from. The Bible says also about the war in the Spirit, I want to remind you here, that they're the beginning of conflicts. Do we have wars, conflicts, problems today? that are caused by the flesh. And again, well, I wonder what they are. The flesh is, and I wonder what the Spirit is. I'm saying it that way again. I know we all know some of this stuff, but I want you to really think about it, what it really is telling us here. So it goes on to say in verse 18, but if you be led by the Spirit, you are not under the law. See, Pastor? Hallelujah! We're not under the law. We're under the Spirit. We're free from the law. Have you heard that before? Have you heard that lie before? Well, you know, lying is part of the works of the flesh. And that just shows us right there in one instance what lying will do to us. If we believe lies. The Holy Spirit will lead us according to what then? God's righteous laws. Huh. It, it's telling us here, you are not under God's law because it contains the Spirit contains God's laws. Are you listening to me, dear friends? Let's not be confused about this in any way, shape, or form. They, the Holy Spirit goes in harmony with God's law. Do you think it's, we, we don't need any laws. We Especially, we don't need God's laws. Well, that brings about confusion in the body of Christ. We should not be confused. What the Holy Spirit does again is it comes into harmony with God's law. So when you're being led by the Spirit again, dear friends, you're being also led by the law. God's laws do not mislead us. They stabilize us and point us in the right direction. Verse 19 says, But now the works of the Spirit are manifest. And here they are. These are the works of the Spirit, I mean, of, of the flesh. Adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies. Wow, that's quite a list. But it goes on. Verse 21. 21. Envying, do you all envy one another? Do we do that? We might. Murders. Does it go so far as us murdering one another? Uh, gee, ask Cain. Are there examples in God's word of people be mad enough to murder one another? Ask David. David, did you get involved Could, really with murder? Remember David 
in his lust for Bathsheba. Sad stuff. It goes on, though. Drunkenness. Do any of you get drunk? How many of you know it when you had too much to drink? And you start acting a little silly, and then you drink a little more, and drink a little more, and next thing you know, maybe some certain things will come out of your mouth. Well, God's Word says, let's not be drunk. Right? D drunkenness, revelings, and such like, of which I tell you before, as I have also told you in times past, that they which do such things shall not enter the kingdom of God. Oh, the kingdom's precious to me. Well, then don't do the works of the flesh. Don't honor them. Don't, don't hang around people that are in the flesh. If you start seeing these warning signs from your neighbors or so-called friends, say, I'm sorry, I'm going to have to quit hanging around you. Because I'm a Christian. I have to answer to a higher power. Amen, brothers and sisters? You know, I want to inherit the kingdom of God, so I do what? I will avoid the works of the flesh. What should we do instead? Well, the next verse says, But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such things there is no law. You're safe. You're within God's laws because you're abiding by the Holy Spirit. And notice how it talks about there is no law here. It's coming into harmony, the Spirit. The law is coming into harmony with the Spirit. God's law does not, is not adverse to the Holy Spirit or vice versa. Amen? Verse 24. And they that are Christ, if you're in Christ, have crucified the flesh. <laughs> have you crucified the flesh? That's what we are supposed to do, which means, in a sense, say no to the works of the flesh. All these works of the flesh. We've all made mistakes. We've all sinned against God. And so we should just stick with our sin because we've been tainted with sin. No, that is not what God's Word says at all. Come out of her and be not partakers of her sins. Does that ring a bell? I want the biblical best for us. I want the Holy Spirit best for us. Don't you, friends? It's about time we start learning some of these things and start implementing them within the body of Christ. For years I thought, oh, I know the Israel truth, but oh, we'll not allow certain types to come in our church and sit back there and behave the way that out, out there, outside, the way that they're doing. God swears, no. You need to preach against that, and you need to stand against that. Because you're taking a stand for what? Righteousness. And against unrighteousness because you are pursuing the kingdom of God, dear friends. That's what God's Word says. That's how strict. And I mean that in a good way. Amen? God's Word is to us. Verse um, 24 again. And they that are Christ have crucified the flesh with the, the affections and lust. We'll boil it down to that, God's Word says. Have you done this, my friends? Verse 25. If we live by the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. 
Because the Spirit goes in line with what? With God's law again. Again, the Spirit contains God's laws. We're not doing away with God's law. We're bringing them in and incorporating God's laws. If you walk in the Spirit, you will avoid the works of the flesh. Amen? Amen. If you won't say it, I'm saying amen. amen. Again, notice how similar the Spirit is with Bible law. You know, you say, well, gee, I, I think the, uh, the Spirit and, the, and uh, God's law seem to kind of go hand in hand, don't they, br Brother Barley? Yeah, amen. That's exactly what I'm saying right there. They do. They go in hand with one another. You know, uh, it's like the covenants. We have the old covenant. Oh, God did away with the old covenant. He brought in the new covenant. We're under the new covenant today. We'll go back and read that old covenant. And go read where in Hebrews 8, verses 8 through 10, where it talks about the new covenant. The same people of the old covenant are the same people of the new covenant. Amen? Well, the same people who were given God's law also have the Holy Spirit. Do you see it? It's just another way, perhaps we could say, of describing this. <clears throat> Verse 26. Let us not be desirous or vain of vain glory. Are you desirous of vain glory? Well, don't be. Quit being jealous of what the world has. Oh, they they have so much money. They have so many votes. They have uh, uh, all this wonderful stuff that they have, whatever it would be. You know, high rises in New York City. Oh, that's a joke today, isn't it? <laughs> Who would have thought God could bring down that the power of New York City? I did. I knew we could do it easily. And he hasn't even begun. If God wants to, he could totally destroy that city. Right? But it goes, it, it says, it goes on to say, vainglory, provoking one another, envying one another. I know we don't do that seriously. But it's warning us here, don't, don't become this way. Don't envy one another. Support one another. Help one another. Pray one for another. Amen? That's what the Bible says. And wow, we'll, what a transformation that would make in our lives. So, if we want to walk in the paths of the kingdom, do not be desirous of the ways of the flesh. Well, you've already said that. Well, let me put it another way. Self or vain glory. Don't do that. Well, I, I, I understand that, Pat. Do you really? Do you watch sometimes the news or movies or whatever you want to watch from time to time, and you get a little, that vain glory sits in on you for whatever cause, for whatever show, whatever program. When you get to the point, most of you have gotten to the point, though, where you have more of the Holy Spirit in you than you do flesh. That's for, or or you think about the flesh in any way, shape, or form. Any of those ways that we described there, aren't you kind of amazed that there's a vast list of things about the flesh? Aren't you? I really am. I'm. I, man, there is quite a list here. But when you move in the Spirit, how wonderful, how blessed, how joyful. And peaceful, the Holy Spirit. And what a blessing it could bring to our lives. All of us have problems. All of us have difficulties and conflicts in our life and things we wish and, and struggle with. But we bring it to the Holy Spirit. We bring it to God and pray over those things and ask Him to lead and guide us. So do not envy one another. Don't wish to be like someone else. 
Be what God made you to be. Right, dear friends? Be. God didn't make a mistake with you. Be what God made you to be. He didn't make me you. He didn't make you me. Thank God for that. I got all kinds of problems. Some of you know about some of them, but you don't know all of them. Because I'm not going to tell you what all of my problems are. And I don't want to hear necessarily what all of your problems are. Just the ones that I need to pray about, maybe. And I'm not a Catholic priest, so don't go to me as one of those, okay? You know, all the women. Can you imagine all the women in the Catholic Church going to this priest and confessing their sins? Or the men going to the Catholic priest, confessing their sins? I wonder why all this pedophilia is going on today in the Catholic Church. I don't wonder. Do you? I know because they're doing what we should, man should not be doing. We should be going to our Heavenly Father on a lot of these things. Amen? He will lead us. He will guide us. He will provi provide a way for us. He will deliver us from the enemy, not man. Now, I'm going uh, on this particular subject, uh, and it, it's the point here, in case some of you haven't totally realized it, it's really on whether we fear God or we fear man. Amen? Do you fear God? Do you fear Yahweh? Do you fear Jesus Christ? Or do you fear man? In the Spirit, we are to do what the Bible says. Fear God. Put Him first. Go to Him in prayer. Well, in the flesh, those things of the flesh, you're doing what? You're fearing man in man's ways. Am I lying to y'all? Am I getting into the flesh a little bit there? No. I'm telling you what God's Word declares right there. I'm telling you hard truth, perhaps. Let's go on to Isaiah chapter 51 and verse 12. <clears throat> so I want us to really get this. Isaiah 51 and verse 12. I... Even I am he that comforteth you. Who's saying this, obviously? Yahweh. Who art thou that thou shouldest be afraid of man? Who are you? All of us. All of you that are watching on DVD. Who are you that you should be afraid of man? How many people are living in fear? today. I'll, I'll build on this as we go here. But how many? Fear, uh, be afraid of man, it says, that shall die. You're going to die. There's your Lucifer, friends. There's your king of Babylon, friends. It says, it says of king of Babylon, He's just a man. He's going to die like everybody else. And people today are afraid of COVID-19. Again, what is man? He's a no God. He's a no God. Little g. But we want to put man and his predictions and his science and his pharmacia and his government and his economics way up there. Some people do. I hope you don't. 
It goes on to say, in the Son of Man, which shall be made as grass. He's going to be made as grass. What's that tell you? He's going to be brought to the ground. We're going to put him six feet under. That's why we should not listen outside of God's word to any man and put any man in his systems on a pedestal. So what's the message here? The message is man is nothing. Why fear man and his ways? Man will eventually do what? He'll die. Remember, God made man and he could take him away. So shouldest thou be afraid of man? Is what's the word? No. No. Well, you're starting to preach to us, brother. You doggone right. I hope so. You're repeating yourself. Mate. That's what God's word is doing to us many times. He repeats things to us until we get the essence of the truth. And what's the truth here? Don't live in fear of man. Live in fear of God, friends. Be guided by the Holy Spirit. And what does that entail? By doing the works of the Holy Spirit. Verse 13 says, And forgettest the Lord thy maker, that has stretched forth the heavens. What is God? He stretched forth the heavens. You know what this says? He's sovereign. Right? And laid the foundations of the earth. Pretty heavy stuff. It means what? God, therefore, he created us. And he can remove us. Isn't that what God's word is telling us here? Going on, it says. And has feared continually day and night because of the fury of the oppressor. As if he were ready to destroy. Question mark. Notice it says. And where is the fury of the oppressor? In reality, where is the fury that you're standing in fear of? How many have been in fear of the oppressor? I wonder out there in America today. They're standing in fury. It's just like wearing these masks. I like to say, here's your sign. Standing six feet apart, here's your sign. Believing in man's science, here's your sign. Who would have thought we would have gotten so low and so uh, miserable as and tainted and gullible and deceived as to believe what man is telling us? What's it telling us? It says, it's really saying, who controls the oppressor? And the answer is, God our Father. He's the adult, may I say. I don't mean to put him down like that, but you know what I mean. In the room. In reality, God is making fun of us. And isn't that really what he's doing here? Some people think and dwell on oppressors of various sorts as if they were out to get you all the time, aren't they? They're out to get us. I, I don't know where exactly this, uh, this oppressor comes in this form. This oppressor is doing this. This oppressor is doing that. Oh, woe is us because of the oppressor. And yet again, how much time, may I say, dear friends, do we spend in prayer in God's Word? How much do we spend in the real power? Ever notice there's more works of the flesh than there are works of the Spirit? Absorb in truth. Be filled with divine light and wisdom. Don't those sound like wonderful words right there? Are you faith builders or flesh builders? Are you working on the works of the spirit or the works of the flesh? 
Do you give the oppressor, and again, there are many of them, like many antichrists today, more of your time and consideration or fear, or do you give Yahweh? Whom, will we, whom do you fear? Do you fear the Lord or some oppressor, meaning politician again? I'm repeating myself because I want you to think about what you're actually doing. Do you fear COVID-19? Do you fear these vaccinations? They tell us any day now, any month now, these vaccinations are coming. Again, I will tell you right now, well, don't you believe that there would be a way out and God would provide a way out? Yes, but it might cost me. I might have to say no. Oh, you poor baby, you, you might have to say no. Well, if that's all you have to do, thank God for that. Well, they're going to force it on me. I don't think so. God's word doesn't go that far. Man may want to. It's for instance, I'll use an extreme example here. All of you, I'll say, jump off the cliff. Are you going to do it? No, because you're not that stupid sheep. You're sheep, but you're not, you, you've become aware. Right? You know better. Friends, life must have a purpose, a divine purpose. Don't forget your calling Israel, your high purpose. How big, again, is the oppressor to you? Or, I prefer to put it this way, how big is your God to you, Israel? For sure, he will always require us to pray. Now, he might, in many cases, and he does, it's not against his word at all to be armed and dangerous to the enemy. We might have to pull out a physical weapon or use a physical weapon, but for sure, you have prayer there, do we not? How much prayer are we going to engage in? Well, the apostles said, for instance, much prayer. He says, I pray daily. Do you pray daily? Do you pray, pray often? Do you wait till there's a problem and then, well, I'll pray? Or do you do you know who your oppressors are? Do you pray against them? Do you know who, who, for instance, basically your national oppressors are, and there are many of them, whom they are? I want to <clears throat> move somewhat in a different direction here, but we're still on the same subject matter. I'm going to read to you out of a book called um, Operation Vampire Killer 2000. It was written many years ago by my dear friend, Officer Jack McClam. How many of you have remember him? He moved up here many years ago with uh, Colonel Bo Greitz. I remember Jack back in Phoenix when I lived there, and I heard about him one day that he was uh, going to run for sheriff in Maricopa County. And uh, I, I knew him way before that. But I said, Jack, I believe in you, sir. I believe in your cause, and I want to help you. And so me and this other guy went out on the weekends, and we said, we will take hundreds of your signs, and we will set, put them up all over Maricopa County. Vote for Jack McClam. So we got this auger and we drilling in and that hard caliche, but we put up hundreds of signs to support our dear brother. And he came very close to winning that election. 
And uh, for some reason, it wasn't God's will for him to win that election, but it was for him to move out, just like it was God's will for us to move out of Phoenix years ago. But this article that I want to read you now, it's called Media Blacks Out the Facts. Quote, but surely if this world conspiracy were true, I would have heard about it in the daily news. Don't a lot of people think that today in some ways. He goes on to say, quote, As in all investigations, it may come down to how can we prove our case? We personally heard about, uh, feel it's hard to top the proof coming from the mouths of the very ones involved in this treacherous, treacherous sorry, the uh, complications of my stroke in pronouncing certain words <laughs> that I had a year ago. An American program, it says. Quote, here is one terrific example. John Swinton. John Swinton. You say, who's that? I'm going to tell you. The former chief of staff of the New York Times was one of America's best loved newsmen called by his peers the dean of his profession. John was asked the other day, no, back in 1953, to give a toast before the New York Press Club, and in so doing made a monumental statement and a very revealing statement. He is quoted as saying the following, quote, There is no such thing at this date of the world's history in America as an independent press. You know it, and I know it, he said. There is not one of you who dares to write an honest opinion. And if you did, your opinion before that, it would be ever appear in print. Well, by the way, I just want to say, would be gone. He said, so I want to say right here, isn't this wonderful? Just this little bit that he said, how revealing that would be and is. If we only understood that part right there, he says, he go, John goes on to say, I am paid weekly, weekly for keeping my honest opinion out of the paper I am connected with. Others of you are paid similar salaries for similar things, and any of you who would be so foolish as to write honest opinions would be out in the streets looking for another job. If I allowed my honest opinions to appear in one issue of my paper before 20 hours, my occupation would be gone. The business of the journalist is to destroy the truth. Yeah, you like that? The business of the journalist is to destroy the truth, to lie outright, to pervert, to vilify, to fawn at the feet of mammon, which means wealth, and to sell out what? And to sell out his country and his race. Can you imagine that term being used today for his daily bread? You know it and I know it. And what folly is this toasting an independent press? We are tools and vassals of rich men behind the scenes. We are the jumpy jacks. They pull the strings and we dance. Our talents, our possibilities, and our lives are the property of others. We are intellectual 
prostitutes, end of quote. What a revealing statement. <laughs> Don't know that. But I imagine he just probably did. If they didn't get rid of him right away, they probably did over something soon. Okay, may, yeah, maybe this is said at retirement. But it's refreshing, isn't it, dear friends? Such honesty. We need honesty again. We need the truth. And Jesus told us again, the truth will set you free. Set us free? He didn't say necessarily it would be an easy thing. He was saying, stand on the truth, though. Declare the truth. Let your yeas be yeas, and let your nays be nays. He, uh, uh, Jack goes on to quote this. He says, Richard M. Cohen. Notice that last name, Cohen. Gee, I wonder if that's Jewish. You know it is. He was, at that time, the senior producer of whom? CBS Political News. And he said, quote, We are going to oppose our agenda on the, on the coverage by dealing with issues and subjects that we choose to deal with. What? That we choose to deal with. And then he quotes, uh, there's this, uh, Jack goes on to quote, Norman Thomas. I love this quote personally. It's one of my favorites. For many years, the, pre uh, the U.S. socialistic presidential candidate proclaimed, quote, the American people have never knowingly adopted socialism, but under the name of liberalism, they will adopt every fragment of the socialist program until one day America will be a socialist nation without knowing how it happened. Gee, I wonder how we became so communistic today. Gee, I, w I wonder how we became so socialistic today. By teaching liberalism. It's the same thing. Now listen to what our white Israelite Hebraic forefathers did. People wonder, for instance, how, how low Israel can get. Well, I'm afraid, just as our, in our present days, Israel can get shockingly low, right? Shockingly low. Turn to in your Bibles to 2 Kings chapter 17. You're going to see now how low Israel can get. 32. 2 Kings 17 will begin there in verse 32. Sounds so good right, right at the beginning. So they feared the Lord. Hallelujah, brother. Israel feared the Lord. Yes, but wait. And made unto themselves the lowest, uh-oh, I don't necessarily like the way this is going, meaning what? The most corrupt, low-life types of men, compromising scoundrels. Uh, the lowest of them, priest of the high places, which sacrificed unto them. You did what you sacrificed into these low lives? Gee, kind of sounds like what's going on today to me, to our Congress, to our politicians, to science. It's another way also of saying did their bidding. Quote, it goes on, in the, house, in the houses of the high places. Oh, Congress again? 
Other places like that? They feared the Lord. And notice here, and served other gods after the manner of the nations. Now I wonder who did this again? Israel. That's who did it. We can't blame anybody else. God's word deals with Israel. Now we can insert here what? Communism, socialism, how about the new world order? They feared the Lord and served other little g gods. Just like today. It says, whom they carried away from thence, their idols. Very sad. But at the same time, kind of alarming how paganism is passed off in such a way in our nation today. Amen? Integration, for instance, pollutes the land. Denial of God's law pollutes our land. We're not enforcing God's law. We're not even enforcing Babylon's laws today, are we? No. Because they think they've got it all wrapped up. They think they pretty much have it where they want it. If we can just get rid of Trump, and I'm not saying Trump is our, our big savior, but you know the agenda. You know the bag. You know what they're after. They want to get rid of him so they can completely move in and take us over and destroy our Christian foundation and our heritage and everything else about our, our heritage. In America, in America, we've what? We have become a nation of prostitutes. Pay attention to this. goes on to say, They fear not the Lord, neither do they after their statutes or after their ordinances or after the laws and commandments which the Lord commanded the whom? Children of Jacob, whom he named Israel. It doesn't say the world here. It doesn't imply all the world. It implies exactly what it means, Israel. You've not done this. If you, Israel, were obeying me and keeping my covenants and my promises and doing what God's word declares and lifting up this light to yourselves and preaching it to yourselves, not the world, things would be much, much different for you. In our nation, we started out that way, didn't we? And we got away from it. And we're told this, you know, uh, we've got to be kind. And Well, we understand the kindness, yeah. I don't have any problem with that. But we should not even allow the blacks into this nation. I've got something great in our next newsletter that's going to come, come out on that. We all need to read. I'm not going to break away from this to go and read that. But we did that with the Indians. We did that with the Chinese. We did that with all the various immigrants today. And now we become, we're full of immigrants. And the blacks, even though they're not as many as we are, they have now, using them as an example, power over us to do what they want to do to us. Aren't they? Are they your brother? Some people want to treat them <laughs> ignorantly. Oh, they're our brothers and they're our sisters. We've got to love Do they love you? Are they treating you that way? Your money, it goes to them in most cases. Is it? Oh, I wonder if they're going to ask for reparations. I'll bring it up again. You're making reparations, Whitey, today in lots of different ways to them. They're stealing from you by the hand of the government. They've gotten involved in the government. They've issued these regulations today and proclamations and treaties and whatever else you call them in their name in their ideals, in their philosophies, which they have been taught 
by the Jews. Our people change God's laws, statutes, and judgments to favor Baalism. But God's laws are to be what, Israel? Eternally kept. We should cherish them eternally, covenantally. Verse 35. With whom the Lord hath made a covenant? I wonder, Israel, and charge them. So whom is he talking about here again? Israel. Over and over, it's Israel. And I didn't say that because I just want to make things up. I say it because I'm honoring and stating what God's word declares. It's written unto the Hebraic, Adamite, children of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob's seed. We are genetically called, we could say, by God. Saying, Ye shall not fear other gods, Israel, nor bow yourselves to them, nor serve them, nor sacrifice to them. God's covenants were from what we're reading here, have not changed. His statutes and judgments and laws have not changed. His will, plan, and purposes have not changed. He's the same Lord and Savior. He's the same King Jesus yesterday, yesterday, today, and forever. Doesn't it say that in God's Word? God is still ruling in Israel he will rule for us. He will come to bat for you, Israel. Will you come to bat for him? Verse 36 goes on to say, But the Lord, who brought you up out of the land of Egypt, way back then, yeah, with great power and a stretched out arm, him shall ye fear. Again, Yahweh has not changed his directives. We have. And him shall ye worship, and to him shall ye do sacrifice. It means in your tithes, in your offerings, and presents, and assembling ourselves together in his name. We come together in his name, not anything in any way, shape, or form having to do with man. And the statutes, and the ordinances, and the laws, and the commandments which he, God Almighty, wrote for us, Ye shall observe to do forever, and ye shall not, and ye shall not, Israel, fear other gods. Shall I repeat this again? We shall not fear other gods. That's a theme then that is given to us in God's Word, are we listening to it? Are we obeying it? But it might be rough. Might be. Might be a lot of different things. I'd rather stand with God and all God's Word. I'd rather believe Him. You know, folks, if He takes my life, He takes it. I hope he does it quickly and personally. There are a lot of ways we could die that I wouldn't want to do. But we all die. So we're here, though, to serve him. I want to ask you, if you serve man, are you going to die? I think so. I think you're going to die one day. I am um, really amazed at the way we have been conditioned in our thinking today. It appalls me that it doesn't come in alignment with God's, what God's Word tells us. And God says, prove me this day, doesn't He? Verse 38. 
and the commandments that I have made with you, ye shall not forget. Have you forgot his commandments? Well, most of them I'm doing. Have you forgot his commandments? All of them? You know, we all, again, sin and fall short of the glory of God, but let's let's strive, not because it's a matter of works, but it's a matter of obedience to the Holy Spirit and how he is leading us. Uh, again, neither shall ye fear other gods, but the Lord your God ye shall fear. Let me repeat that one. But the Lord your God ye shall fear, and he shall deliver you of the hands of some of your enemies. Not what God's word says, if you'll do these things ahead of it, but he says, I will deliver you out of the hand of all your enemies, Israel. So God shall be our deliverer. Amen, friends? Amen. Howbeit that they did not hearken, though, but they did after the former manner. I just, it's, it's sad, really, what Israel has done. But this is Babylon. This is how, Babylon means what? Confusion. This is how confusion starts. They confuse your thinking. They confuse your thoughts. They confuse your philosophies. They confused God's law. They confuse doctrines. Don't let man confuse you. They did not hearken to Almighty God but, but they hearkened after the former manner. And Israel is still not listening to God today, are they? Verse 41. So these nations feared the Lord. Oh, finally. They feared the Lord and served their graven images. They feared the Lord and served their graven images images? Folks, this is just another way of describing what? Judeo-Christianity. They want their cake and eat it too. They want to do both. Goes on to say, both their children and their children's children. Are you going to bring this curse on your children? You bet you will if you do this. As did their fathers. Did their fathers do this? You bet they did. And so do they, it says, unto this day. Whoa. Well, I'm at a close here. In a sense, this is our light and glory. Hallelujah. Israel, though, this is also your pain. Isn't this our pain today? Choose ye Israel, the Bible says, whom ye will serve, Baalism or Yahwehism? The divine way or man's way? The divine way is our glory, God's word tells us, but man's way is our pain. You want to follow men or you want to follow God? As for me and my house, I will serve the Lord. This will conclude our message, our sermon, and our series that we've been involved in on the glory of white Israel and the pain. May we know it for a surety in our minds, in our hearts, what God's word declares. May we move in the right direction, God's way. Amen and amen. Holy Father, we went a long time in this series. We cover many things. We, we repeated repetitiously many things. But because your word tells us to, and because you have repeated principle after principle, divine eye.